Hello, Mountain View Christian Academy, and welcome to our parent meeting. Athletes, hopefully you are already at home and sitting with your parents. I appreciate everyone's willingness to be able to do this year's meeting electronically. We'll see how it goes and hope for the best. So as we talk about athletics, take a look at our athletics mission statement here at Mountain View. Mountain View Christian Academy sports program is designed to encourage Christ-like character, teamwork, sportsmanship, and school spirit within a competitive environment as a part of producing well-adjusted, morally sound individuals equipped to transform society. Hopefully you recognize the second part of that mission statement from the school's mission statement. Our athletics program is part of our school and we do want to enhance that mission, taking up the same mission that the school has of producing well-adjusted, morally sound individuals equipped to transform society and using athletics as a way to accomplish that goal. Because we are an educational institution, we do have some specific goals that might be a little bit unique or a little bit different than you might find in a county setting or in a professional setting. The goals of education-based athletics are first, we want our students to learn sportsmanship, to win graciously and to lose with dignity. While we wish and hope that every game is a win, we know that that doesn't normally happen. And so students need to be able to win and to lose while maintaining their sportsmanship. Number two, we want to model integrity through playing by the rules. Integrity is sometimes referred to as what you do when no one else is watching. Well, in the realm of athletics, there are always people watching. So it also includes what you do and how you act when people are watching. Number three, we want our students to use teamwork in order to contribute to a greater goal in which the athlete places the team's success or recognition before that of an individual. Almost all of our teams here at Mountain View are team-based and not individual sports. And students do need to work to put their own uh, ego, their own pride aside for the sake of the team sometimes. Number four, we want our athletes to reach out to assist teammates, which translates into helping others around them in life and contributing to the community. We want our athletes to recognize when someone needs help, whether it's on the field, on the court, in the classroom, and we want them to take the initiative to offer their skills, their gifts, and their talents to help those around them. Goal five, we want our athletes to develop perseverance and the ability to bounce back from defeats. As already mentioned, while we wish that every game or every meet could be a win, that doesn't always happen. And athletes on the field, on the court, and in life need perseverance. There will be times when there are defeats in life and there are hard times. And athletics can definitely help teach the skill or the character trait of perseverance. Goal number six, we want our athletes to incorporate goal setting learned through athletics into their approach to life. Hopefully our athletes are coming to the game or coming to practices with no goals. We're hoping that they have the goal to be better now than they were at the beginning of the season. That they have goals like get fit, get in better shape, learn to eat better. We want them to take those goals that they use in athletics and apply those into other areas of their lives, whether it's in school or at home or even in their future careers. Goal seven, we want our athletes to develop a solid work ethic that emphasizes preparation and effort. We know that professional athletes put in hours of time to develop their talents and their skills. And while we don't expect hours of time for our athletes on a daily basis, we do want them to have that work ethic, knowing that if they want to improve at something in life, it does take work. And our last goal, goal number eight, we want our athletes to recognize positive attributes in others. Our society is full of celebrities and others on social media who brag about their own talents and their own skills. We want our athletes to, while recognizing their own talents and skills, also recognize that they are not the only talented and skilled people in the world. They will play against talented and skilled athletes on other teams and on their own teams. And we want them to be able to recognize those talents and skills uh, and, and congratulate those who have those talents and skills uh, when they see it in others. 
One of the first parts of our athletic mission was developing sportsmanship. Interscholastic events are an extension of the classroom, and the lessons are best learned when the proper respect is shown to all coaches, players, and officials. Parents and athletes, that means let the coaches coach. They volunteered their time to do this job. Respect their time by letting them do what they have volunteered to do. Let the players play. It's very difficult for players to play and listen to a coach on one side in one ear and a parent on the other side in the other ear. If you would like to coach your child, I recommend you do that not during practice or a game time, but do that at home on the weekends when you're putting in that effort and working on that work ethic. And finally, let the officials officiate. Our officials are trained and tested officials. Whether volleyball or basketball, they have passed a test. They have officiated more games than either you or I have, so let them officiate. That doesn't mean you will agree with every call that they make, but they're the ones running the show. Let them do their job. Finally, please let your good sportsmanship show during today's game. That might sound familiar to you if you've been to a basketball or volleyball game before, as we do read that prior to every game. A word about determining teams. We do have a K-12 through school, and so we do have a variety of teams. Students grades 5 through 8 compete at the middle school level. Students grades 9 through 12 compete at the varsity level. If there are too many athletes to safely supervise a team or not enough uniforms, tryouts or cuts will take place. In all my years at Mountain View, we have not had to have cuts. Thankfully, we have enough uniforms to be able to allow everyone to play. Occasionally, we do let fourth graders play at the middle school level if we need more students in order to feel a team. And on the same hand, we have let middle school students, seventh and eighth graders, play up at the high school level again if we are needing some athletes to play at that level in order to feel the team. As much as it depends on us, if there is interest, we will try to field a team as long as we have enough athletes and adult supervision slash coaches. Homeschool athletes may compete at Mountain View with the following stipulations. There must be space on the team after all fully enrolled students who want to play have signed up. An athletic fee must be paid. The homeschool athletes must meet all academic and other eligibility guidelines, which state that they must still be students. No matter their age, they can't have graduated. And homeschool athletes cannot play in conference games. Currently, only our middle school teams are in conference in a conference that does not affect our varsity teams. If you have any questions about why we allow homeschoolers to play or any of these stipulations, please feel free to contact me, Heather Harbin, directly, and I will be happy to answer your questions. We do have some requirements for school attendance for all of our athletes. In order to practice or play, athletes must be present a certain number of classes. On the left side of the chart, you can see the number of classes enrolled. Some of our older students are only here part-time as they take several classes at Lord Fairfax, so they might only be enrolled in three classes. Our younger students are enrolled in more classes. Now you'll see it says six or seven, even though we have nine periods a day. One of those periods is lunch and another one of those periods is study hall. So we're only counting the seven academic classes. On the right hand side of the chart, you see how many classes they must be present that day in order to practice or play. Now this is not considering doctor's notes or orthodontist appointments as being absent. This rule really applies to a student who wakes up, doesn't feel well, wants to sleep a couple of hours before heading into school and still playing the game that night. They must be at school a certain number of classes before they can practice or play in the game that evening. Athletes who are present at school should be at the day's practice or game on time. A doctor's excuse is an exception. If you are at school, you are expected to be at practice or the game. Athletes who miss practices or games will miss playing time. The exact amount of playing time is determined by both the sport and the coach. Repeated absences or tardies may result in further consequences from the coach. Athletes must participate in at least five practices prior to playing in a game. We're trying to improve or increase the responsibility in our student athletes, and part of that is being where you're supposed to be when you are supposed to be there. 
These students, these athletes are part of teams and their teammates are depending on them to be at practices or games. When they don't show up, it doesn't affect just them. It affects the whole team and the coach. I've actually had to cancel games because I found out that a certain number of students weren't going to the game that day. I didn't know until that afternoon and I had to call the other school to cancel because so many athletes were just not going that day. Uh, it's embarrassing for this school. It's frustrating for us. It's frustrating for the other team who's already paid for officials. And so athletes are expected and our coaches are planning on every athlete being at every game. If you know in advance that your student will not be at a practice or a game, your athlete, your student needs to communicate that to the coach. Please don't have them tell a friend to tell a friend to tell the coach. Please inform the coach directly so that decisions regarding practice drills or gameplay can be made. We do have some requirements as well in the classroom. Student academic achievement and success takes priority over athletics achievement and success. We call them student athletes for a reason. Our main concern is their education. And as a result, as an elective, they get to play athletics. It's not a right, but a privilege. Participation is a privilege and not a right. Our academic eligibility policy is outlined in our handbook. Feel free to read that on your own. But in summation, athletes cannot have any more than two Ds, or they will be ineligible to both practice or play for two weeks. Athletes with two or more Ds, that includes Fs, cannot even go to practice. They need to be taking that time to go home, to work on their homework, to study, to get help in those subject areas. If you have questions about this policy, please don't hesitate to ask. Once an athlete has raised his or her grades, that player must have a written note from the teacher of the subject in which they were ineligible. The note must have the current grade and the teacher's signature and must be brought to the athletic director, Heather Harbin, prior to participating in any practice or game. It is the athlete's responsibility to make sure that they are reinstated. They can't just think, oh, my grades are better now, and head to practice. Until they have the athletic director's permission and the teacher's signature, they are still ineligible. Decisions in our, our athletic um, department are made by several people. Decisions are based on the policies put in place by the Mountain View administration and what is best for the student. Any discipline will be handled according to the student code of conduct and all decisions will be communicated uh, to the athlete, to the parents, and to the coaches. Things that are required before you can play in a game, athletes, you must have a physical exam. This is good for one calendar year. Some places call this a, sp a sports physical. Essentially, it's a note or form from your doctor that says you are cleared to participate in school athletics. Again, this is good for one calendar year. You must have the athlete slash parent rules acknowledgement form instead of a paper form. Following this video, you'll take an online quiz, if you will, and that will serve as your acknowledgement form that you have listened to this presentation and read the handbook. Homeschool athletes, you must also pay the participation fee. All of these must be on file before you are allowed to compete. Some important things to remember, uh, things I've already mentioned, but I'm going to rehash. Athletes are expected to be at all practices, meetings, and games. Notify the coach if there's going to be an absent. An athlete must be in school in order to practice or play. An athlete must have participated in at least five practices. The athletic director and administration do reserve the right to enforce behavioral ineligibility based on our school code of conduct in any disciplinary situations. Finally, athletes are required to travel on the team bus unless prior permission is granted by the coach and athletic director. If your child is going to ride with you, you must let the athletic director and coach know. We expect our students, once they have been chosen or once they have chosen to participate in a sport, uh, that they will uphold the commitment that they have made to attend all the practices and games and to be part of that team until the end of the season. We expect our student athletes to conduct themselves as representatives of not only their own name and themselves, but as the school and as representative, 
representatives of Christ at all times. Our expectations were our parents. Parents, we expect that you understand and support the mission of MBCA Athletics and the coach's efforts to attain this goal. That you encourage your child to honor his or her commitment to going to that extra mile to regular attendance, to academic excellence, and to physical fitness. We expect that you will uphold all of Mountain View Christian Academy's athletic policies and consequences for violation of these policies. You may have additional expectations for your child that you implement, or you may not always agree with all of our athletic policies, but we do expect you to uphold them. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to ask. When having concerns or expressing concerns about your child's health or safety, please discuss these with a coach. If a student or athlete, student athlete gets hurt at practice or has some health or safety issues or concerns in a game, they should talk first with the coach in person. Athletes do not get hurt, say you're fine, go home, and then tell us you went to the emergency room. If you are hurt, you need to tell somebody in practice or in the game. If that issue or concern is not resolved by the athlete and coach communication, then the parent should contact the coach. Please don't do this immediately before, during, or after a practice or game, as coaches are often busy with pre-game and post-game responsibilities. It's better to do it before or after a practice rather than a game if you had to choose a two. If this is an actual emergency, and you're taking your child to the doctor or an emergency room, obviously the coach can talk to you at that point. If an issue or concern is not resolved in speaking with the coach by the parent, then the parent should contact the athletic director. Again, please don't do this immediately before, during, or after a practice or game, as I do have responsibilities. However, in the case of an emergency, exceptions can be made. If possible, please make an appointment with the coach at least 24 hours in advance. Our coaches are all volunteers who work other jobs, and they can't always be there right at the end of school. Find a time that will work for both you and the coach to discuss any concerns that you have. Again, please don't approach a coach immediately before, during, or after a game unless it is a true emergency, as coaches are responsible for more than just your child. They have the full team to take care of and pre- and post-game responsibilities that they must carry out. If students have a concern about playing time, strategy, play calling, or team conflicts, what should they do? First, they should talk with the coach in person. We are trying to empower our student athletes to be their own advocates, to speak to the adults that they work with. If they don't learn to speak for themselves, this often carries over into the classroom, the college setting, and even into a possible career. They should be able to address a person in authority calmly and respectfully about their concerns, and we want to teach them that through this athletic role. After they've addressed the coach, they can ask some questions like, how can I improve? Or what strengths do I bring to the team? Or where do you lack confidence in me? Are you available to help me? Coaches are more than willing to talk with their student athletes as long as they are being approached with respect and addressing things that are true concerns. It's up to the athlete then to listen to what the coach is saying to them and to think about and put those suggestions if they give any into practice. Athletes, if you can, make an appointment with the coach at least 24 hours in advance. Sometimes you don't need 24 hours. If something happens in practice, you were doing a drill in practice, and you just need some clarification, that can be addressed immediately after practice or a game. But larger concerns about playing time, play calling, or team personalities should be dealt with in an appointment. Do not approach the coach immediately before, during, or after practice or game and expect them to be able to address your issue right then. While they might be able to fix something small or address something small, they also are taking care of the other people on your team and have pre- and post-game responsibilities. If your child is injured, please do the following. Athletes, if you are injured during a practice or game, report it immediately to the coach. Don't try to shake it off, walk it off, or say that you're fine if you are truly hurt. Allow the coach to treat you to the best of their ability. The coach will then evaluate the injury again to the best of his or her ability and will recommend treatment or further evaluation by a doctor. 
the coach will communicate with you parents regarding all injuries as long as the coach is aware of those injuries. Now our coaches are not athletic trainers, nurses, or physicians, and so they will definitely leave the final call up to you, the parent. But it is up to the coach to communicate anything that happens during a practice or during a game. If a doctor examines your child, whether it's your general practitioner or an emergency room doctor, a signed written release by a doctor is required to allow the athlete to resume activity. Parents, you cannot override the doctor. If a doctor says that your child must rest or be out of practice for two weeks, then that is the rule that we all must follow, no matter the time of year, no matter what tournaments are approaching. For the safety of your child and for the safety of the team and the school, we need to follow those doctor's orders. Regarding concussions, head injuries are not to be are to be treated with extreme caution. Concussions are not just dings. If after being hit in the head, you have any of these signs or symptoms, you will be evaluated for a concussion. Some signs and symptoms include headache, feeling of pressure in the head, temporary loss of consciousness, loss of memory, confusion, feeling as if in a fog, dizziness, seeing stars, sensitivity to light and noise, ringing in the ears, nausea or vomiting, slurred speech. Now, I always like to tell everyone that I have tinnitus, which is constant ringing in the ears. This does not mean that I have a concussion because it didn't start after I got hit in the head. I've had tinnitus for as long as I can remember. So that is separate from a concussion symptom. What we're talking about is the symptoms that occur after you get hit in the head or knock your head on the floor or run into another player. Athletes who experience a head injury with any of these signs or symptoms during practices or games will be removed from the activity and they cannot return to play until cleared by a doctor. Once under the treatment of a doctor, all concussion guidelines and protocols must be met before return to play is permitted. Classroom teachers will also be notified of concussion protocol as concussions can also affect classroom and academic success in activity. Again, parents and athletes, I hope that you're getting the picture here. We want to keep you safe. We want to keep your teammates safe. And if you are injured or if you have a concussion, we must follow all of the doctor recommended steps and procedures. If you're wanting to see the athletic schedule and news, you can go to the Mountain View Christian Academy website, which is mvca.ccmv.com. No www at the beginning, that's important. You'll also get weekly emails from the athletic director with the schedule for the week, locations of where the games are going to be played, when the team will leave, their approximate time of return, and what to bring with them, whether it's snacks, supper, or money. If you have any questions about these schedules, feel free to ask. Parents, I thank you for coming to our virtual athlete and parent meeting today. Don't forget that when you are finished with this to review the electronic handbook, which is an attached Word document, and then proceed to the form for the five question quiz indicating that you have listened to, read, understood, and agreed to all these policies and procedures. If you have any questions, you can email me at heather.harbin at ccmv.com. If that's unclear, you can also find me on the school website under personnel, find my name, shoot me an email. I look forward to another great year of being a conqueror. Have a great afternoon.